Our next speaker is probably the uh, most uh, international man of mystery that you'll ever meet. He's responsible for bringing us the back-to-back. Uh, -back. <laughs> Shlomi is demonstrating in the corner. <laughs> what? What? Sort of looks like jumping jacks. Mr. Uh, Giovanni will be speaking um, about uh, open SIPs, ISA, SIPI, many carriers. And Switch. Giovanni. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. It's a pleasure to be here one year more. The air are going away, but we still have hope. And let's <laughs> let's see how it will go. And uh, this presentation will be about uh, a special uh, implementation and uh, that's very focused uh, about uh, what is an uh, intercarrier uh, service, uh, we will see. And uh, uh, we will see some specifics uh, uh, where uh, OpenSIPS has some uh, unique uh, features uh, and uh, uh, advantages that, that uh, help uh, the, to build uh, in a very, very, very easy way a service that uh, uh, you know how the big corporation uh, like uh, Accenture can charge for this. is some uh, number of zeros that uh, we never see when uh, we send out uh, some invoice. But, uh, we will see how it goes in uh, a little bit uh, about myself. Uh, it's uh, a lot of time that I'm in uh, this uh, industry, uh, actually more than uh, I would like uh, uh, to remember. And uh, uh, the new things uh, is that uh, uh, my company, Open uh, Telecom, is doing a joint venture with uh, Voice Center and uh, we will uh, work more and more uh, as a voice reach that uh, nice uh, new logo that you see uh, about uh, international consulting, uh, enterprise and career grade solutions uh, and this and that. So uh, we will see uh, that. And uh, some books uh, about uh, uh, free switch uh, that uh, I wrote uh, and uh, conferences uh, where uh, I was. Uh, and that's enough with the corporate things. So uh, let's speak about uh, open SIPs and uh, free switch. And uh, in, uh, in this solution, uh, we've used the uh, uh, Open SIPs uh, as a front end, uh, as an SBC, as uh, a mm, protocol uh, translator and converter, and uh, uh, we we use the Open SIPs uh, exactly how it's supposed to be used. So at a very low level. Uh, to deal uh, uh, with the uh, slight uh, nuances uh, of the protocol that makes uh, uh, the whole difference uh, uh, when uh, uh, you try to integrate uh, uh, different words. But, uh, you know, uh, there was uh, a special uh, requirements uh, in this project, uh, so uh, we need to uh, to do a back-to-back -back user agent uh, uh, to uh, bridge calls. So we uh, do have an incoming call, uh, we do some calculation, then we originate uh, a BLEG and then uh, uh, we bridge the two calls and uh, mix the audio. So. Uh, from one side, uh, the, the first things that uh, an uh, OpenSIPS uh, user uh, will think about, and uh, I do a thought about, uh, was, uh, ah, let's use the back-to-back uh, -back module uh, of uh, OpenSIPS. 
and because uh, uh, you you know that that, that module is there and uh, and uh, you always thought okay sooner or later i will use that module and then uh, i i look into that and from one side uh, is uh, a, a little bit rigid and uh, from another side it was uh, uh, also a little bit unfamiliar to me so uh, even if it use uh, familiar xml um, configuration uh, but uh, uh, it was kind of uh, uh, difficult for uh, me also because i'm uh, uh, pretty used uh, to uh, pre-switch so uh, what we thought is uh, okay. Uh, let's uh, let's save a uh, structured solution. Uh, let's not uh, try to uh, to have a one only tool that solves all the problems. But uh, uh, let's save the, the best part of the both words. So, uh, for a back-to-back -back user agent, uh, let's use pre-switch. That's a back-to-back -back user agent that was designed from the beginning to be a back-to-back. -back. And, uh, and it's scriptable, it can do a lot of things, uh, etc., etc. So, OpenCPS uh, in the front, uh, free switch uh, on the back, uh, and uh, free switch do the back-to-back -back user agent, uh, uh, do the media stuff, uh, and uh, OpenSIPs uh, do all the signaling, uh, uh, security, and all those things. Let's see, because uh, uh, probably not, not many of uh, us uh, are aware of uh, ISOOP uh, and uh, CPI. ISOOP uh, is, uh, is a part, uh, is the, the, the SIP part, is the uh, session control part uh, of the SS7 protocol. SS7 uh, is the protocol that the, the, the big boys uh, into the uh, PSTN carriers uh, use uh, uh, to control uh, uh, their network. It's an incredible uh, protocol. It's a very, very, very robust. Uh, it's probably one of the big features uh, that humanity has done uh, in terms of technology because if you think at the stability of the PSTN also 20 years ago and uh, it is uh, like the, the six uh, nine the, the, the thousand sigmas and all those things that uh, we are never able to reach I mean uh, voice over IP uh, SIP, uh, whatever, will never be robust uh, uh, and stable and give that kind of continuity like uh, SS7. And SS7 gives also uh, the possibility to uh, control uh, the hardware, uh, to control uh, your infrastructure. So it's like also to have uh, SMP, uh, SMNP uh, inside and all this. So is a complete different protocol that we don't know nothing about, or at least I don't know nothing about. I have uh, full of respect and probably I imagine that is better than it is in the reality, but uh, it's, uh, it's nice uh, to uh, believe uh, in uh, fairy tales, and I like that. And uh, uh, ISOOP is uh, uh, the part uh, of that protocol that deals uh, with the establishment and tearing down of uh, sessions. So uh, has exactly the same uh, uh, role that the SIP has uh, uh, into uh, VoIP. And uh, ISOOP is a binary protocol uh, like uh, all SS7. And uh, uh, there is a need uh, for carriers to uh, interconnect. Uh, those carriers normally, what they do, they interconnect uh, in SS7. Uh, problem uh, with the interconnection in SS7 is that uh, it's overly complex and uh, because uh, it deals uh, with the core network, uh, uh, you are expected uh, to pass through uh, so much uh, test uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
um, formal uh, acceptability uh, processes that uh, uh, it doesn't work uh, for something uh, uh, that is not uh, a major endeavor. And so uh, more and more carriers uh, uh, interconnect between them for uh, uh, services uh, through SIP. But SIP uh, doesn't carry uh, all the kind of uh, um, uh, signaling all the kind of uh, information that is uh, uh, needed for uh, uh, intercarrier uh, services, particularly uh, things that are like uh, what kind of phone has generated uh, this call? For example, it was a pay phone because uh, in uh, in the carrier world uh, they have uh, uh, this concept about. Uh, uh, pay phone is a completely different thing than normal phones. It's something that uh, we don't take, but uh, it's uh, very important uh, uh, in the career uh, world. And, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, uh, how uh, the charges, who will pay for that uh, uh, call? So uh, there are uh, uh, fields uh, into SS7 that define who is paying for that call and uh, uh, through what kind of uh, uh, infrastructure that call has passed through. And uh, many, many, many of those uh, uh, information that are uh, uh, very important for uh, intercarrier uh, connections. So uh, IETF and ITU uh, come out with a way uh, to encapsulate uh, uh, all uh, ISAP uh, um, information into uh, SIP. Uh, SIP uh, uh, being an, ext an expandable, extendable uh, protocol, uh, you can stuff uh, uh, things uh, into uh, the SDP, into the body of uh, uh, a SIP uh, uh, message. So uh, the solution was, uh, let's use uh, um, a part of the uh, SDP and encode directly in binary. So uh, just get the ISOP uh, and bring it into the SDP, uh, binary encoded, as uh, uh, a MIME part, uh, uh, you know, you can have a MIME part uh, like uh, HTML that, uh, uh, or XML uh, is very, uh, very often you use it uh, uh, into notification uh, in uh, publishing uh, or in M M uh, MWI uh, to signal that uh, there is some uh, voicemail. <laughs> and uh, you use uh, an uh, uh, XML attachment into SDP. Okay, same thing, but with a binary attachment uh, that uh, uh, it will bring uh, uh, around uh, uh, the ISOOP uh, um, information. Uh, problem is, uh, uh, we will see that uh, uh, some uh, um, some software and particularly free switch uh, doesn't work so well with binary attachments uh, inside the SDP. Uh, so uh, we, we will see. And uh, uh, what was uh, uh, the assignment? So to have a uh, high available and scalable platform, but uh, that's uh, uh, what uh, what we do, uh, something that is uh, industry grade, uh, uh, career grade, and uh, that uh, you can rely on it. Uh, we have uh, uh, CPI incoming trunks and outcoming trunks. That's another requirement into Telco. Uh, you have uh, some uh, trunks, uh, in this case uh, uh, CPI. So, uh, SIP with uh, ISOP uh, uh, into SDP, 
and uh, uh, each trunk uh, will, gen uh, will bring calls that uh, will have to go into some other specific trunk uh, based on calculation from uh, origin to destination, etc. So uh, the routing uh, will be based on uh, which trunk uh, the call come from, uh, tech prefix and all the things that were used into SIP, and uh, uh, some information that uh, we need uh, to decode from ISO. Uh, all this uh, will uh, make the, the, uh, the input data that we will use to do some operation into a database uh, to understand the mapping for the final number and uh, the final routing. Another requirement was that all the ISO parts that are not modified by us will be preserved uh, from uh, the A leg, from the incoming call uh, to the outbound uh, leg, so from the A to B leg. So uh, you have a continuity propagation of the ISO part uh, from uh, um, origination to termination and uh, obviously uh, there has uh, there has to be uh, some meaning uh, some uh, way for the uh, carrier operators uh, to uh, auto provision uh, uh, the mappings uh, on the db and uh, some other details so that's what uh, we expect so uh, let's start with the topology and uh, starting from the uh, left uh, we have the uh, trunks, uh, the, the uh, yellow uh, things are the inbound and outbound trunks. Uh, they send uh, uh, signaling and media to uh, a very classic uh, active-passive uh, um, OpenSIPs and RTP proxy uh, pair with the uh, uh, floating uh, uh, IP uh, address and uh, so this uh, let's say uh, proxy uh, block uh, will then uh, send the uh, calls uh, to a farm of uh, uh, free switches and uh, those free switches and uh, the routing blocks uh, will uh, uh, interact and interconnect uh, with uh, uh, Postgres uh, in uh, uh, bidirectional replication and uh, with a base of a uh, uh, cluster uh, file system uh, if <coughs> need uh, uh, for the files that need to be shared. So let's say a classical uh, high available scalable uh, st infrastructure that in this case uh, uh, was used uh, to interconnect uh, uh, different carrier through uh, ISOOP and uh, the special uh, way that uh, uh, OpenSIPS has uh, uh, to deal with ISOOP. Uh, I will try to go faster now because I see that uh, time is running uh, away. Uh, so, um, obviously, we'll take care about uh, uh, security uh, using uh, uh, all the feature of uh, uh, OpenCPS that is the only point of contact uh, with the wild internet. Uh, and uh, uh, as availability, um, uh, we uh, duplicated uh, on the front in active passive and then uh, uh, we have uh, clusters uh, for file system and uh, database and the farm in uh, uh, load balancing. Here uh, again, uh, the, uh, the blocks uh, where uh, we have keep alive that, that will move uh, uh, the services between uh, the active passive, uh, um, the active passive uh, open SIPs and uh, uh, the rest. Uh, of the infrastructure. Uh, the uh, presentation will be available on the um, on the website uh, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll be around. So <clears throat> how has been implemented? Uh, the call uh, comes in uh, 
uh, it passed through all the validation and uh, security uh, phase uh, inside OpenSIPS. And then uh, OpenSIPS is able uh, to understand uh, the binary um, part of uh, uh, ISOOP into SDP. And so uh, what, uh, what we choose to do uh, was uh, let uh, understand uh, what each field that is of our interest do and uh, write uh, an uh, additional X either into the SIP packet, uh, adjust uh, an ASCII uh, X either, so free switch uh, down will uh, read that, uh, um, that X either and will act uh, upon it uh, without having to deal uh, with uh, uh, binary attachments. And uh, uh, so what, uh, what we have done is uh, translate all the ISO parts that is of interest for us uh, into uh, plain ASCII uh, X headers and uh, from another side uh, encode in uh, uh, base 64. So uh, encode in uh, ASCII uh, the whole body of the uh, ISOOP, so we can propagate it. So the whole body will be encoded in base 64, free switch we read uh, the base 64 encoded X either, uh, will do uh, what he's supposed to do, then we'll produce another uh, base 64 either that will be reread from uh, OpenSIPS uh, into uh, the B leg, so in, on the way out, and will be translated back into ISOOP. So we'll have pretty much continuity about uh, all the information into the ISOOP. And uh, the, the, the other important thing is let's strip that uh, binary attachment into SDP. From, uh, from the packet that go uh, to uh, free switch. So we have uh, incoming call CPI. CPI goes into um, uh, CPI goes into OpenSIPS. OpenSIPS read all the ISOP and translate it into XEDERS. Exceders goes to free switch. Free switch understand the exceders, do things with the database, uh, do its machinations, and uh, uh, originate uh, another another leg. Uh, the another leg has a lot of exceders. Those exceders uh, will be interpreted by uh, OpenSIPs. Uh, OpenSIP will translate those. Exceders into ISOOP and send out a CPI call without exceders. So from that side, we have only CPI without any kind of bizarre either. And inside, we have full of eaters and no CPI at all. So the best of the words for uh, using the best tools for uh, doing each part of the assignment. And uh, this is a description of uh, what FreeSwitch do, uh, I just told it. And uh, then uh, you have uh, to deal with all the uh, user interface, uh, the operator that has to do things, uh, who can do what kind of things, etc. And uh, we use the, an already made uh, framework for managing FreeSwitch that's called Fusion PBX made by Mark Rand, that's a friend, uh, by the way. And uh, uh, it's a nice uh, uh, framework, very flexible, very easy to adapt uh, for many things. Uh, I will be presenting uh, uh, next, uh, in the next weeks uh, in Kamali Award how to use this framework uh, to do SIP services. 
And uh, uh, so uh, we use that both for managing uh, uh, the database uh, uh, tables and the users, the roles, uh, uh, the permissions, uh, who can do what, uh, the auditing, so uh, let's save a trace of uh, who has done what, etc. So uh, all this presentation uh, uh, was about how uh, you can do a very uh, specific, very complex, uh, and uh, uh, very, uh, let's say, highly technical uh, service uh, uh, for uh, the carrier's world uh, based uh, on uh, uh, building blocks uh, that are open source uh, and uh, that are easy to assemble and uh, engineer uh, to be a robust uh, solution. So uh, let's save, uh, uh, first of all, a round of applause uh, for uh, uh, Vlad Patrascu and the OpenSIPS team that uh, gave us uh, uh, the uh, SIPI module. Uh, thank you. And uh, this is uh, in fine lines uh, what has to be done. And here, for example, uh, you see that for each uh, uh, for each uh, uh, part of ISO, uh, we create uh, and append uh, an uh, additional X header that is uh, uh, just uh, uh, an ASCII X header. And uh, somewhere here, uh, we encode the, the whole body, the whole uh, ISO part of the SDP body into uh, base 64 that will be uh, re. Uh, decoded and reused uh, on the uh, leg out. And now, some porn! Woo! <laughs> How you can expect, wow. there is a, some SN grab that will show you all the, uh, all the flow of a call. So, uh, the call comes uh, from uh, the, the uh, trunk, and uh, goes into open sips, uh, that's uh, this and this. Then it goes uh, to uh, free switch, then it goes to open sips, then it goes uh, to the outs, uh, uh, outbound trunk. The interesting part of this, uh, we are showing here the initial invite. The interesting part of this uh, is this one, and uh, you can't see it very well here, but Okay, here you can see better, but this is the SDP. And the SDP has this part that has uh, is application ISOOP, and uh, you can see nothing because it's binary. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's uh, what uh, we end up working with. And uh, uh, only because of the power of open SIPs, we can interpret what's inside uh, the uh, SDP, the ISO part, and interconnect many different carriers, preserving all the information and make them happy. So that's finished. <laughs> we have some questions out here. So yes, when yes. Uh, when we receive uh, into OpenSIP, OpenSIP interpret and drop. Yes, it's, uh, it uses uh, the remove, bo uh, remove body. Yes. And, uh, and, and it drop uh, uh, the ISO part, uh, so the resulting SDP is a normal SDP without ISO at all. Uh, RTP proxy has uh, has no uh, has no nothing to do with uh, CPI and ISOP uh, because RTP proxy uh, will deal uh, with the normal part of the SDP uh, where uh, the audio and uh, I mean the um, the RTP part of the SDP. Please. From the regard, like, uh, 
Yeah, what, what, what free switch do is uh, uh, it threads uh, the exceder and uh, uh, creates uh, uh, channel variables and then uh, the dial plan and the scripts uh, will uh, act uh, upon those channel variables. It's very easy plane, get the uh, exceder, the exceder is a variable, that's the name, that's the value, that's it. But when it goes back to open sets, open sets understand which all have to be converted to binary as I said. Yeah, the, there is that module, CPI, that to do all that. Okay. It understands the headers and only then only yeah. headers go into the uh, binary, right? The X header were created uh, on pure post. So uh, we, we, we like, I want to understand how yes. And, uh, and when uh, the call was going out, uh, we strip all the headers. So uh, the, the call go, goes out a pure CPI without X headers. No, but it still has a binary part when it goes out to the X Yeah, uh, it will be created by the CPI module. Okay. Yeah. So in uh, incoming, uh, we will strip it out. Outbound, uh, we will create a new one. We'll add uh, all the original info, and uh, we modify from that original info. Uh, I'm sorry, but in, in the presentation is uh, uh, is defined, uh, detailed, and we can speak uh, uh, later because I see that Alex is pushing me out. Why is it me? <laughs> so actually, we have a, 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 a